And right next to Gattaca, we have In Time from the same writer-director, Andrew Nichol. I actually really like In Time. I feel like this is one of those movies that it would have um, gotten more um, accolades that it deserved if the lead actor wasn't played by an actor who no one took seriously, and the lead actor is Justin Timberlake. Uh, but it's a great satire of economic inequality. I still, I still love the movie. Uh, the original Iron Man, yeah, self-explanatory. Pitch Black and the Chronicles of Riddick. Riddick's not all that good, but there was a sale if you bought both these at the same time, and I do like Pitch Black. Robocop, one of my favorite movies. I uh, also have a Robocop uh, tattoo, but I'm filming with that arm. Uh, in case you haven't seen it in many of my other videos. Durr, yes. Uh, so this was the limited edition. It's got like a booklet and a bunch of other cool stuff on it. So uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely, uh, definitely had to get that. Uh, this is my little lament configuration that I bought off of Etsy, by the way. Um, Splice. Uh, this is Vincenzo Natale, the guy who made Cube, which is a really great movie. He made this. Um, I know a lot of people don't like this movie, but I fucking love it. The Starship Troopers Trilogy. Uh, the first Starship Troopers, absolutely love, much like Robocop by Verhoeven. It's uh, another uh, great uh, satire against the things I hate, like right wing and the military and militarism. Starship Troopers 2 sucks. Starship Troopers 3 is okay-ish. J.J. Abrams' Star Trek, it's okay. I just wish that J.J. Abrams didn't touch anything. Star Wars The Last Jedi, because I actually like the movie. Um, fuck the people who think Force Awakens is better. Force Awakens is a lazy, unimaginative piece of shit. At least The Last Jedi tried something new, and I actually thought it was fun and successful. I know a lot of people don't like it, but fuck them. Tron and Tron Legacy. Yep, I like Tron. Uh, 12 Monkeys. Uh, never watched the TV show, but this is an excellent film. Uh, Terry Gilliam. I believe it's the first movie Brad Pitt ever got an Oscar nomination for. Um, obviously it's about a time travel and a global pandemic, so maybe not something you want to watch right now. Um, and it's uh, an adaptation of a short uh, film called La Jete that I had to watch um, when I was in college getting my film degree. La Jete is uh, just a short film that's made of a series of still images, except for a little bit of movement at one part. Twelve Monkeys is a lot better. Um, I absolutely love Twelve Monkeys. I'm not sure if it's my favorite Terry, Terry Gilliam film, but it might be. Watchmen, one of the few Zack Snyder movies I actually like. Um, it's faithful enough, so I like it. Batman Begins. I forget why it came in a gift set like this. It, did it come in a t-shirt or a poster or something? I don't remember, but Batman Begins. Crank 2 High Voltage. Um, I kind of like it slightly more than Crank. I think it's also the last movie David Carradine did before he, uh, you know, accidental. Uh, Drive Angry, um, because I like bad Nicolas Cage movies. This is actually a 3D Blu-ray, but my uh, PS4 does not play 3D Blu-rays, so I can't enjoy that, but it also has a regular Blu-ray in it. And then John Wick 1 and John Wick 2, because, you know, who doesn't love these movies? John Wick 3 I was a little bit colder on, but I still liked it, but 1 and 2 are great. Kind of, not sure if I'd say I like 2 more than 1, but 2 had more mythology. Machete, because it's fun. Punisher Warzone, because I am a fan of the Punisher. I just wish a bunch of right-wing assholes weren't also fans, because they misunderstand the character. Rambo, this was the fourth movie. I know they're very uh, confusingly titled, considering the order they go in. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if you just want to see uh, Rambo just destroy the entire population of Burma or Myanmar, uh, there you go. Adventureland. Very excellent, uh, underrated dramedy about uh, the summer job at, a 80, at a amusement park, a local amusement park in the 80s. Excellent fucking movie. Big Trouble in Little China, John Carpenter. Bruno, uh, the... The, uh, the unappreciated stepchild of Borat. Um, <laughs> I like it. Can't Hardly Wait. Um, this movie, I think it came out when I was in high school, and at the time I thought it was just a, um, a pale imitation of, like, 80s Brat Pack movies, but in the years since, it has in and of itself become sort of a, uh, kind of classic of teen comedy cinema. Go figure. Capitalism, a love story, a Michael Moore documentary. Um, not as good as some of his other ones. I think it was a blind buy when I had gotten it. Cheap Thrills. I still haven't watched this movie. This is another one that I won for free at the Alamo Draft House. Conan O'Brien Can't Stop. I'm a huge fan of Conan O'Brien. And uh, when he was uh, undeservingly fired from The Tonight Show, but before he got his TBS show, he went on tour and they made a documentary about the tour. Dan in Real Life, um, Steve Carell, Dramedy. I think it's an underrated movie. Uh, not a lot of people have seen it or even talk about it. It was filmed in Rhode Island, though, where I uh, grew up. Easy A, fun, 
um, comedy. Uh, I wish they had released it as the R-rated version instead of the PG-13 version, because they filmed a lot of scenes both ways, but it's good. Um, Extract, uh, a very underrated film from Mike Judge, who I absolutely love, creator of Beavis and Butthead, King of the Hill, Office Space. Extract is like Office Space if it was about the managers instead of the employees, and as someone who has been a regular employee and a manager at different jobs, I relate to both movies, but Extract is great and it's underrated. Fanboys, um, this was a not a blind buy, but a blind gift. Um, it's about um, some guys, they want to steal a copy of The Phantom Menace to watch it because they have a friend dying of cancer who won't get to it. Um, I know that the movie went through a lot of production problems, and Weinstein and the director fought over the final cut and a lot of other shit. Movie's okay. 500 Days of Summer, I really, really like this movie. Um, I know it's, it's kind of gotten a weird critical reassessment where people... Apparently when they first watched the movie, they didn't realize that Joseph Gordon-Levitt was not a good person. <laughs> I mean, you can empathize with him to a certain amount, because you can empathize with his heartbreak, but he's also uh, kind of a villain and creepy. Um, but I thought most people got that when it opened, but I guess they didn't. Forgetting Sarah Marshall, um, it's probably... it's almost 10 years since that movie came out, right? Um, but it's still probably the funniest of the more recent comedies I've seen in the theater, and... Yeah, God, I mean, what did that come out, like 2008, maybe? 2009? Not a lot of good comedies have come in theaters lately, I guess. But, uh, but forgetting Sarah Marshall, still great. It's kind of a wonder Jason Siegel uh, kind of disappeared for a while. Uh, Game Change, uh, about, um, you know, Sarah Palin and everything. Uh, fun movie. Good Luck Chuck, yeah, I hate Dane Cook, and um, Jessica Alba's not very likable either, but for some reason I like this movie. I like the guy who's cursed where every woman he has sex with finds their true love directly after him. <laughs> I don't know. It's a stupid movie. It made me laugh. I like it. Uh, Groundhog Day, you know, classic. Uh, the Hangover. The Hangover is a good movie. It's just that the trailer for the movie, which is why it became a big hit, uh, gives away every single major joke in the movie, which is why I actually like The Hangover 2 a bit more. It's darker, and even though it follows the same basic structure of the first Hangover, uh, all of the jokes weren't ruined by the trailer. Harold and Kumar Escape from Guantanamo Bay. Mm, silly fun. He's Just Not That Into You. Um, I like this movie. I haven't watched it in a very long time, and normally it's not the type of movie I'd own, but I liked it. Hot Tub Time Machine, because I like 80s nostalgia. <laughs> and I like John Cusack. The House Bunny, because it's fun. <laughs> the Invention of Lying. I like that this movie is basically just a giant atheist screed, um, but it's done as a delightful, fun comedy. Ricky Gervais isn't the best actor, but he, he wrote it, and it, it's fun. Jackass 3, or Jackass 3D, because, you know, those movies are fun. Juno. I, I know Juno it won uh, Best Screenplay, and then there was a lot of backlash to the movie about it being a little too cutesy, uh, but I like Juno. Kick-Ass. Kick-Ass is fun. When you start to... Um, we're in the comedies right now. We just left the um, the horror and then the sci-fi. I should have called out the, um, the different groups I was going in. Uh, but I used to buy a lot more movies than I do now. Now, if I buy something, it's like one of these boutique Blu-rays, or it's a movie I actually like, love, love. I used to just kind of buy movies just because I like them, and I don't really do that anymore. Uh, I Love You, Man. Also a fun movie. Jason Segel, Paul Rudd. You know. uh, MacGruber. I absolutely hated the SNL sketches, but I went to see the movie because I think nothing else came out that weekend, and I'm addicted to going to the movies. And I absolutely love the movie, but it bombed. And I'm so happy that in the years since it's bombed, it has gotten such a nice cult following, and now apparently there's going to be like a TV series sequel on Universal Streaming Service whenever that starts. Yeah. Mean Girls. I mean, it's Mean Girls. Risky Business. A great classic Tom Cruise. Sausage Party. Another comedy that's also an atheist screed. <laughs> Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. You know, of course I like that. Sex and the City, the movie. So I actually liked Sex and the City, the TV show. I like this first movie, even though there's some things it sort of undoes from the TV show. Absolutely hated the second movie, though. The second movie is garbage. Uh, but the first movie, I, I still kind of like. Uh, Sex Drive. Aside from the fact that the movie on purpose miscast one of the roles, where the, uh, 
the um, handsome Lothario is played by a guy who's uglier than I am. Uh, and so it, it makes the movie feel a bit weird. Um, but I do think this movie is quite funny. And I like that the movie has a quote-unquote unrated version that is just a parody of unrated versions that would come out on Blu-ray that were just like extra useless nudity or deleted scenes and shit. So. And then Short Circuit and Short Circuit 2. Um, I actually like Short Circuit 2 more than the original Short Circuit, but these movies are kind of tainted by the fact that Fisher Stevens does horrible racist brown face in them. Though I didn't know I didn't know Fisher Stevens wasn't actually Indian for the longest time. I just thought he actually was Indian like he is in these movies. But yeah, gotta love Short Circuit. The Slam and Salmon from uh, Broken Lizard, you know, the guys who uh, made Super Troopers and Club Dread. Uh, this was a blind buy because I just like Broken Lizard's movies. Um, I think Puddle Cruiser is the only one I wasn't too keen on, but they made that in college and didn't quite get their style down yet, but this is great. Uh, Super, by James Gunn. I, I, I love James Gunn's stuff even before he joined Marvel. I probably like his stuff from before Marvel even more. Um, <laughs> uh, but a great film. Super bad. I mean, that's, you know. Take Me Home Tonight. Um, again, because I love 80s nostalgia. Um, this movie bombed. I think it was, it was sat on a shelf for a very long time, too, before it bombed. Um, but I like it. Tenacious D, The Complete Masterworks 2. I like Tenacious D. I think I have The Complete Masterworks on DVD, and I have the movie on DVD, but I have this on Blu-ray. The Trotsky, I made a Dave's Faves video about this, so I don't really need to talk about it anymore. Um, Zack and Miri make a porno. Um, you know, I like Kevin Smith. This is a funny movie. Zombieland, same thing. I like horror, I like comedy. It's a horror comedy. Um, and then we get into the dramas. So, Adoration um, is a movie by Adam Agoyan, who's one of my favorite directors. Uh, he made The Sweet Her After and Exotica, which are two of my favorite films. Exotica is, like, my third favorite film. Adorations is very good. It's not up to the level of those movies, but I'm a huge fan of Adam Goyan. I even took a class of Adam Goyan in college. American History X uh, is a movie that uh, it seemed like every everyone in my high school loved when it came out. Um, I know there's been a reassessment of it lately, but I still like it. Apocalypse Now is self-explanatory. Um, Basic Instinct, not a good movie, but, you know, it's it's trashy fun. For the Devil Knows You're Dead, uh, Sidney Lumet, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Rip, and, you know, Ethan Hawke. So, <laughs> Black Swan. I love Black Swan. It's a, it's, it very much feels like an Argento film. Chloe, also Adam McGoyan. I have a poster of this movie. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I mostly, you know, I like Julianne Moore's one of my favorite actresses. Amanda Seyfried I like in it. Uh, and Adam McGoyan's one of my favorite directors. So, there you go. Cruising. I should make a video about cruising at some point. Cruising, uh... God, there's too much for me to talk about cruising for me to talk about it here. I'm just going to say, watch cruising. Uh, the Deer Hunter, a uh, famous film, Michael Cimino. Um, I remember when I talked about Heaven's Gate when I was talking about my um, Criterion Blu-rays. Deer Hunter is the movie where he won Best Director and it won Best Picture, and it's the movie that allowed him to make Heaven's Gate. And then Heaven's Gate is the movie that allowed him to make no other movie after. <laughs> well, he made a couple. Dog Day Afternoon, classic Al Pacino. Drive, I mean, I own the jacket from Drive. I obviously love that movie. The Edge. Uh, the Edge is a great example of a movie that has politics I disagree with, but is excellent. And it's basically about a rich man who crash lands in the Alaskan wilderness with the guy who's fucking his wife, and they are pursued by a bear who is determined to kill them. As written by David Mamet, uh, it has a very libertarian, conservative uh, ideology behind it, but I think it's a great movie. I, I used to watch it on HBO all the time when it came out. Fight Club, it's my favorite movie. Um, I also have kept the DVD that I own. I have a Fight Club tattoo. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how much I have to talk about Fight Club. <laughs> Franklin was a blind buy because the trailer had some very interesting visuals, and part of the movie takes place in a world where it is illegal to not have a religion. Sadly, the movie does not live up to its concept because... Part of it takes place in that world, and part of it takes place in the real world, and it should have just focused on the fake world they create, but, you know. Gangs in New York, Martin Scorsese. Uh, <laughs> Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, Fincher. The Godfather Trilogy, self-explanatory. Gone Baby Gone, um, you know, uh, Ben Affleck's directorial debut. I, I love movies that are morally ambiguous and that don't quite tell you what right or wrong is. And the ending of Gone Baby Gone, I still think it's one of the best endings of a movie ever because the main character has made a decision and he has to live with that decision. And 
you as an audience member have to really look at it and decide for yourself if you think it was the right decision or the wrong decision because there's no easy moral answer. In the Line of Fire, a fun movie, um, Clint Eastwood's a uh, Secret Service agent, John Malkovich is the guy who wants to kill the president, and they have a cat and mouse game. The Informers, because I'm a big fan of Brett Easton Ellis novels. Um, Brett Easton Ellis himself seems like he's kind of a douche, and uh, the last movie he wrote was that horrible The Canyons. Um, but The Informers I like. Plus there's a lot of naked Amber Heard in it. Uh, Inglorious Bastards may, may be my favorite Tarantino movie. Uh, JFK, uh, even though I myself don't believe in any JFK um, murder assassination uh, conspiracy theories, I still think it's a very good movie by Oliver Stone. La La Land, I mean, you gotta love La La Land. Well, I guess you don't. The Lake House. The Lake House is a romantic drama that has some mild time travel elements based on a South Korean film starring Sandra Bullock and Keanu Reeves. I actually really love this movie, um, and I'm not normally a person who likes romantic dramas, uh, but it is... I, maybe it's the time travel concept about, you know, they're writing letters across time and everything, but I actually really, really love this movie. It is, uh, it is the most unabashedly dramatic chick flick that I own and love. Last Tango in Paris has a scene where a guy anally rapes a woman using butter as lubricant. <laughs> Famous movie um, with... Um, um, Marlon Brando, um, you know, Bernard, uh, Bernardo Bertolucci film, yeah, which is, you know, um, would make sense that it's right next to Nine and a Half Weeks, which is, it was Fifty Shades of Grey before Fifty Shades of Grey existed, uh, 80s sex movie, Kim Basinger, Mickey Rourke, not very good, um, but it's sort of a classic of its own type. Nocturnal Animals. Um, I actually really love this movie. Um, it's by Tom Ford, the guy who makes like makeup and cologne. Um, <laughs> haven't seen his first movie yet, but Nocturnal Animals is absolutely excellent. I'm a big fan of Jake Gyllenhaal, big fan of Amy Ryan. Um, Isla Fisher is also in it. Um, it's just an excellent, excellent film. Same goes for Place Beyond the Pines. Three hour long movie. Um, I forget, what's the other movie this guy made? Um, I'm blanking on the, the other movie this director's made. Um, but uh, it's three hours long. Um, it has, like, three very distinct segments. Um, but, um, what's his name? Um, Ryan Gosling's in it. Bradley Cooper's in it. Dane DeHaan's in it. Um, it's it's sort of a an epic of uh, personal tragedy and everything. Um, really, really great film. I want to say that I went to see this movie the same day the Boston Marathon bombing happened. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Rocky 1 through 6, so it has every Rocky movie that is not called Creed. <laughs> Shame. Uh, PG-13, um, PG NC-17 uh, rated film uh, starring Michael Fassbender. You see his dick. It's about a sex addict. Uh, Sicario, um, movie I really like. Um, you know, um, Denis Villeneuve is a great director, and uh, this was the first movie of his I saw. Silver Linings Playbook, um, you know, the fact that it's sort of a dramedy about bipolar disorder up some people the wrong way, but I really, really like the movie. Social Network, again, I love David Fincher. Uh, Straw Dogs, uh, Sam Peckinpah film. Uh, the Criterion um, version was out of print. And since then, there's a special edition that's come out from MGM. This was the bare bones edition that came out between those, and that's when I ended up buying it. Um, very violent, sort of a home invasion, rape revenge movie. Uh, Syriana. Uh, Syriana, very underrated film. Uh, it got some Oscar nominations and then disappeared. Did it actually win a screenplay nomination or a screenplay award? Don't actually quite remember. Um, but it's great. It's basically about just. Um, United States intervention in the Middle East with the intelligence community and the military and how it's all about oil, uh, but it's a fictionalized tale. Excellent film. Taxi Driver, it's probably my favorite Scorsese film. It's Taxi Driver. There Will Be Blood, which is probably my favorite Paul Thomas Anderson movie, um, also one of my favorite directors. Unbreakable, uh, my favorite uh, M. Night Shyamalan film. Uh, Whiplash, I mean, who didn't love Whiplash? This is not my tempo. J.K. Simmons, <laughs> great film. Wild Things. Oh, man. Um, if you were... Uh, let's see, 1997, I was 13... This is 1998, actually, so I was 14... About 14 years old when this movie came out. Uh, if you were 14 years old when Wild Things came out, then Wild Things was your favorite movie in the world. 
Oh man, Wild Things Wild Things is a trashy, sleazy uh sort of a thriller that normally would be like an episode of Silk Stockings or uh or it'd be like Cinemax or Skinemax stuff, but it's differentiated from those by having a very clever, intelligent, and very twisty script. Uh, there are so many twists that even after the credits start rolling, it's still revealing stuff to make sense of those twists. Uh, Wild Things is an excellent, excellent movie, and not just for the reasons I loved it when I was 14. Uh, the Wrestler, um, Darren Aronofsky. Uh, I do love Aronofsky. Um, most of the movies I own by Aronofsky I have on DVD, like Pi and uh, Requiem for a Dream, which is my favorite of his. Uh, the Wrestler is one of his more conventional films, but it's also excellent. Um, Young Adult, another movie uh, written by Diablo Cody. I guess I, I guess you can say I like her. Also directed by Jason Reitman, so same as um, uh, same as Juno. Uh, Young Adult, I think, didn't get as much um, love as it should have. Pat Oswalt was probably robbed of a supporting actor nomination. Uh, but yeah, love that. Um, and then I have a couple um, kids movies slash animated. So, Batman The Dark Knight Returns Part 1, The Killing Joke, which I do love, aside from the, you know, the whole prequel with um, Batgirl fucking Batman, uh, Death of Superman, which is a blind buy and it sucked, uh, Dick Tracy, which I loved as a kid, it doesn't quite hold up as well, but it still has really great makeup and production design, um, everything except the story is great in Dick Tracy. Um, also, I didn't realize until I watched it as an adult how weirdly sexual it is, especially when it comes to the Madonna character who makes... A lot of innuendos, and she wears like a see-through chiffon thing, and it's um, it's not quite as kid-friendly when it comes to her. But I think Warren Beatty was banging her at the time, so that's why she's in it. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Um, part probably book five was one of my least favorite books, but I but it was one of my favorite movies of that series. Go figure. Isle of Dogs. I previously mentioned uh, my hatred of Wes Anderson, but I do like this movie. Nightmare Before Christmas is self-explanatory. Uh, this is uh, Rent. It is not the movie Rent. It is like a, a hodgepodge of some of the final performances on Broadway of Rent. So it's the filmed stage play. Um, I do have the movie, but I have it on DVD. Um, but I love Rent. I'm a huge Rent fan or Rent head. Simpsons, because, you know, I love the Simpsons. Superman Red Sun, because communist. And then Roger Rabbit, because, you know, I also have a, a Jessica Rabbit tattoo. And then after that, you get into my DVDs. Now, if we start to open my cabinets, we start to get to some of my box sets and TV stuff, so um, I'll be panning by some DVDs that I won't talk about, but so I'm just going to talk about the Blu-rays as I pass by them. Uh, Stranger Things, I uh, got it on Blu-ray because it came in like this cool faux um, VHS container, uh, but that's the only reason I did that. Uh, True Blood Seasons 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, I think I stopped collecting them after 4. Um, I, I liked True Blood. It kind of fell apart right around Season 5. So, um, there's some parts of Season 5 I like, like Christopher Maloney. Um, but after after that, it's when it, it went downhill and was very disappointing. They sh probably should have followed the books a little bit closer. Um, Twin Peaks uh, Season 3, or the Limited Event Series, or Twin Peaks The Return, whatever you want to call it, it's that. The Gold Box is DVD, not Blu-ray. But Twin Peaks The Return is in Blu-ray. And then Wanted... Um, a very silly, stupid movie, uh, but I, I do like it. It's sort of like if Fight Club was directed by Michael Bay. So <laughs> I know it's a horrible adaptation of the comic book, but I liked it as a movie. Um, and then down here, um, Blade Runner The Final Cut is in there, as well as like a, a toy car of the spinner and a couple other goodies in there. It was a little collector set I bought. Let's see, and then we have uh, Season 2 of Archer. I kind of stopped collecting the seasons of Archer after 2. Uh, Beavis and Butthead Volume 4, which is basically just that... It was that um, revitalized season, because they released three volumes that were just the classic Beavis and Butthead episodes. Um, not in any seasonal order, they were just the, the episodes that Mike Judge wasn't ashamed of. Um, and then uh, Volume 4 is everything that was on MTV a couple years back when they brought it back for like a, a single short season. Dexter's Season 3, 4, and 5. Um, season 6 is okay, but I didn't buy it, and then everything after that was garbage. 7 and 8 are terrible. Um, but, and I have Seasons 1 and 2 on DVD, but uh, 3, 4, and 5 are the ones I got on Blu-ray. Dollhouse Season 1 and 2. Um, 
This is sort of the bastard stepchild of the Joss Whedon TV series after Buffy, Angel, and Firefly, but I was actually a really big fan of Dollhouse, and um, I will still defend that. Game of Thrones Season 7, basically because Seasons 1 through 6 were gifted to me, as, and I had not watched them, so I binged those. And then after that, I didn't have HBO, and I saw this in a Target, and so I picked it up as an impulse purchase. Uh, I eventually signed up for HBO to watch Season 8. I have no desire to buy Season 8 for the reasons none of, none of you do. Handmaid's Tale Season 1, because I didn't have Hulu. Um, <laughs> so I bought it. Um, How I Met Your Mother Season 4. Now, what's odd about this is that I think Season 4 was the only season they released on Blu-ray? Because I had Seasons 1 through 3 on DVD, and then Season 4 was released on Blu-ray, so I bought that. And then when Season 5 came out, it was only available on DVD. So I have 1, 2, 3, and 5 on DVD, and I have 4 on Blu-ray. And I don't think I bought any seasons beyond 5. And then Lost Seasons 4, 5, and 6. Yes, the ending is disappointing of Lost. Uh, but the journey to get there, even though they had no plan, was still pretty good. Um, and also, J.J. had very little to do with Lost after the pilot, so don't give him credit for it. Uh, Louis, uh, Season 1, because I was a huge fan of Louis C.K. before I found out that he jacked off in front of women without their permission. Uh, <laughs> I, still, I still think he's very funny. I still think some of his stand-up specials are some of the funniest that have ever been recorded. Uh, but he's an asshole. <laughs> and then Mr. Robot, Seasons 1 and 2. Uh, season 3, I ended up buying on Amazon so that I could watch it live, because I don't have cable to watch it in USA, and I did the same with Season 4. Seasons 1, 2, and 3, um, absolutely love them. Uh, for the first three seasons, Mr. Robot was the best show on television. Season 4 sucked. So, uh, they did not stick the landing. Season 4 was garbage. If you just pretend that Season 4 didn't happen and just watch Seasons 1, 2, and 3, it is absolutely one of the best pieces of television ever produced. And then Rick and Morty Seasons 1 and 2. Um, again, I don't have them on Steelbook. And also, they were, they were super cheap when I bought them. Uh, Terminator, the Sarah, Con uh, the, 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 the Sarah Con Connor Chronicles, Volume 1. I never bought Volume 2. Uh, for my money, uh, the, Sarah Con the Sarah Connor Chronicles as a TV show, which it basically is a sequel to Terminator 2, and it's, the TV show was much, much better than any of the movie sequels. Because you have, except for T2, obviously, because Terminator is a masterpiece, Terminator 2 is a masterpiece, 3 is garbage, Salvation's garbage, Genesis I didn't hate as much as a lot of people did, um, but, you know, it's still eh, and then Dark Fate was garbage. Uh, but this TV show I actually kind of liked. Westworld Season 1, because I didn't have HBO and I wanted to see it. Um, I've watched a couple episodes of Season 2, but I haven't finished it. Uh, just for the record, I just saw, I actually do have Season 6 on DVD. So I stopped collecting after six. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, I'm here because I have two seasons of House on Blu-ray to match the ones I ended up getting on DVD. Because um, <laughs> I think season six was the first one they released on Blu-ray. They may have gone back and released these after the fact. But season six, season seven, because I was a big fan of House, despite the fact that it's a very formulaic TV show. Um, I never got season eight, which was the last season, because it wasn't as good. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, I'm trying to see if I have anything else. Oh, and then, um, if we go a little dip here to this, uh, shelf, uh, I have one season of The Office on Blu-ray, season five. I stopped collecting them after five, so I only have seasons two, three, four, and five. Season one, obviously, no one likes. And then, uh, last but not least, I have one single Blu-ray of a season of South Park, season 12. That's the, uh, the only season I have on Blu-ray. I have a couple other random seasons on DVD, but only one for Blu-ray. So there you have it. That is uh, my entire Blu-ray collection as of the time I'm filming this, which is July 31st, 2020. So um, at the rate that I'm buying Blu-rays, especially in quarantine, it will be out of date very, very quickly. Uh, so I might break this up into a couple videos, depending on how long that was, because I wasn't actually keeping track of it. Um, but I assume it was very long, so I might break this up into two or three videos. I'm probably not going to do one long one. Um, so, uh, if you want to see the rest of my collection, you saw a couple of DVDs in there, but if you want to see the DVDs I have, uh, you can leave a comment below. Um, you know, stuff like that. Um, uh, hopefully, now that I've done this very long one, it'll be many years from now before I need to do another one because of having so many. 
Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's where I stand right now. So uh, for those of you who voted for this uh, particular uh, option in that poll, I hope this is what you wanted. Um, if not, sorry. Um, and then uh, I'll probably maybe do another poll because uh, there's two other options that were on there. I'll see what everyone wants to see next. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, have a good one, everyone.